Um, so usually around the movement at meetings, conferences, yes. et cetera, et cetera, um, what's usually talked about, can everyone mute their phones, please? Or mute their computers, rather? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so usually around the movement, people um, talk about the routes to getting there. How are we going to get to a World Federation? And that makes sense because that's our most immediate concern. Um, but we, we don't, you know, talk much at all about what it might look like when we get there. So I, I want to kind of bring this over to that conversation and to do that, um, kind of focus on two things and share kind of two tips about that. So first of all, the question is how many models are there? <laughs> so I, I will say that um, our first speaker, um, Glenn Martin, who will be up shortly, um, has in his writings, and he's probably researched this the most because he's been, you know, he and his group has been working on a constitution, is he says that there are over 200 models um, of constitutions for the earth that have been proposed. However, um, you know, most of them have not um, risen to the level of prominence. So there's only really a handful um, of, of constitutions and models that really are in the literature that we talk about and you know, reference quickly. So these are the ones that we have selected um, for this conference and here are the speakers as well who will be presenting on them. Um, that's not to say that those are the only ones that are notable uh, or even the main ones because there are at least two others, at least that I'm aware of that also I've seen a number of times in the literature and those are the two um, that just came up below. Now, we're, we're not presenting them, not because we think they're inferior or anything like that. It's just the question of the time we have and who is available. So th th but th those are the main ones that I think if you've been around the movement for a while uh, that, that you hear. Uh, most of them are historic. Um, some of them are still being worked on and there is one in the gang um, that's a, a, a new model um, that will maybe hear publicly, um, you know, for one of the first times. So, so that's kind of the, the, the lay of the land. Now, in terms of how to think about what you're going to hear and how to make sense of it, um, there are two tips that I'll pass on, um, on how to listen to these presentations so that you can compare the models and get the most out of them. So the first tip comes from Joseph Barada, who is one of our speakers. We'll be hearing from him tomorrow. Um, and basically he says that there are in his book, by the way, that listed there, The Politics of World Federation, he says that there are four main issues that every proposal, every model needs to deal with. And these are the four that first of all, who can join a federation? Um, is it universal as the UN attempted to be, you know, bringing everyone on when you start? Or is it more limited to just the democracies, for example, to form the nucleus of the federation? And then over time, perhaps as other nations democratize or become more accountable to their citizens, um, they can join. So that, that's one issue to see how the different models relate to that. Second issue is representation. You know, is it proportional to the population of the country? And if so, then as we know, you know, India and China um, will have the greatest number of representatives there. Um, or is it weighted? Does it have to do with other factors than just population? So that's another issue that's discussed and debated between the models. Um, next are the powers that this has. Is it a minimalist? Is it just pulled together to abolish war, for example, or to save us from climate disaster? Or is it a maximal model trying to be, you know, saying it facetiously, all things to all people, but a much more broad scope as many governments are? So where do the models fall on that dimension? And lastly, on the uh, Barada list is the transition to that. Are they mostly through UN reform? 
um, or is it done outside of the UN? And there are a number of variations in both. Now, that question was the focus of our conference last year. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that this year. But those are the four different issues that um, Joseph Arata uh, offers in, in a way of looking at the different models. Now, a different uh, schematic um, was offered by James Yunker uh, in his book, Rethinking World Government. And he basically looks at the structures of these things and has some wonderful charts in his book comparing a few of the models. So he says with each model, of course, you have to look at who created it, who is the author or the principal group or source, uh, what's the name of the model, what do they call this thing, and then looking at the different structures of the government. So um, how does it pass laws? What does the legislature look like? How does it function, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, next is the executive branch. How does the executive branch do its thing? How does it oversee the administration um, that it has and all of that work? Um, next is the court system. Uh, what does the judiciary look like on a global scale? And lastly is how are those laws enforced, uh, both the enforcement mechanism and how would that federation protect itself, whether it's from non-state actors, whether it's from countries, kind of, you know, what we would might call rogue nations that don't join the federation, et cetera, et cetera. So that's Juncker's proposal for how, um, how to evaluate and compare these things. So these are issues you might even want to note when uh, the different speakers speak. It's also something that we've asked the different speakers to touch on these various points. So it's easier to compare them. You're comparing apples with apples as opposed to apples and oranges. So those are just two tips I wanted to pass on in terms of how to um, make that comparison. 